All right, walking to the starting line in Les. Yeah. I'm here with a fellow ultra runner, originally from uh, Costa Rica. Yep. What's your name? Luis. Luis. Awesome. Good luck today. Thank you. Good luck to you too. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice race. Thank you. Get in line for the bath. Hola. Hello. How are you? Nice to, nice to, nice to meet you. you. Uh, what city are you from? Uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Oh, I love Barcelona. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good run. Thank you. We're back. Thank you. miles in oh. back on a trail <laughs> easier to follow now it's a little hard in the grassy wet stuff ran across the snow patch too a lot of rocks wet rocks slippery stuff this is a nice trail look at that view Whew. Goodness, full exposure. Cool. Oh. Train track. This looks. Oh, I got off my head. Hey now, Brown. 
cow. <laughs> How's your day going? You have a good day. Look at these guys. Don't you charge me now? It's alright. Almost 34 miles in. Whew. Hurting. Got dehydrated. Stomach felt a little iffy. Got my drop bag. It took a while. Uh, this is a tough race. I'm waiting for these mountains and climbing again. Seems like we're running a lot of mud. Flat. Through cow poop. Not gonna lie. Not doing well. Kind of rigging up. The lungs are in a lot of pain. It's like I'm good for like five hours and then it's like I get this nasty side stitch and there's a lot of pain in the lung area. Whew. I don't know. I'm hurting pretty bad, slowing down pretty bad. So, might have to pull out the second headlamp for tonight. Wanted to finish before it got dark, but this course is brutal and I'm hurting. I'm gonna try not to blow a gasket totally, finish it up efficiently. Coming into a mile 44 at station, hopefully. I need to ask if they have a beer. Seriously, they don't probably. Yeah, it's like my side stitch scar tissue in my lungs. It's making my stomach hurt, but everything's tight. <laughs> Get some water at this big tank here. It's the first step. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, see. Sí. It's good. Gracias. Thank you. Oh, yeah, American. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, rough. And then it's restricted my breathing. It's like a ticking time bomb. It's gonna be brutal to finish. Uh. <clears throat> <coughs> the lung catching, it's this horrible side stitch. My breathing's ragged now. It wasn't for the first four or five hours. I was climbing pretty well. Now it's just a disaster. All right, I'm gonna fucking walk it into the finish if I have to. Gracias. Thank you. I'm good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Uh, thank you. Good job. Oh, you're much stronger than me. Go, go. Go, go. I'm slow. I follow you on YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, this be, oh yeah. what's your really name? Amazing. What's your name? Gerard. Gerard. Where are you from? I'm from Reunion Island, but I live oh, wow. in Belgium. So oh, Belgium. Nice. I, I follow your advice about... Oh. Uh, you know? Well, you're about to pass me, me right now. Me work. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Oh, that's good. Because you're Belgium looking strong. is really flat. Yeah. And uh, I have to work on the treadmill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're doing awesome. You're about to pass me. Yeah. So, yeah. you finish strong. But it's, it's hard. <laughs> Lots of people are stopping. Yeah. It's uh, been spread out, so... You're doing really good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it does feel quite hot. Yeah. I'm surprised. I didn't think. I thought it'd be cold. Yeah. yeah. Well, you go. Yeah. Go finish. Go. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. Go finish. Good job. You're awesome. Finally got some climbing again. Oh, these rocks are gnarly. It's gonna be a tough climb up to the next station. Yeah, this whole torsos and it's like tight it's really weird oh hmm <coughs> good job go 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 good job keep it up good job go go good job good job go go I hope we're not going into the storm. Look how fast these guys are moving. I've been reduced to a walk on the flats. It actually hurts even to run downhill right on the scar tissue area. Ah, it's really tight. Way to go. Good work. Ah. Good job. Ended up in the medical tent at mile 52. These nice people are helping me. It's the worst I've ever felt at an aid station in an ultra. I don't know if I'm gonna get out of this one. Ah, it's so 
feels so bad. It's weird in a weird way too, not like the legs are strong, legs are holding up. Good job, go, go. The swelling in my, it's just so much chest pain. It's just, it's debilitating. It makes my stomach feel weird too. Just trying to get some food down, but, uh, it's, it's, you know, I could puke and rally usually, but it's not even that. All right, here with my Hoka teammate. I think we're gonna have to call it here. It's a tough choice. He has an excuse though, he just did comrades on a down year. What was your time at comrades? 5.38. 5.38, that's really fast, comrades runner. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>
uh, some of the favorite scenery. Of course, I didn't see the whole course, but you know, it was early in the race. Five, six hours in, breathing. It was feeling decent. It was feeling decent. No, no, severe chest pain. Legs felt great, especially I like the technical downhills, some of the off trail stuff. You're just running across these grass. There's a lot of snow crossings, mud crossings, you name it. Really cool, um, beautiful course. Everyone's so encouraging. Aid station, so we're great. Uh, yeah, about five, six hours in, it's a lot like UTMB. I started, I was getting a little dehydrated, I'll, I'll admit that, but I suddenly got that weird chest pain. It's mainly my right lung, uh, pleural pain, I believe. It's like where the scar tissue is, or where the, where basically where the pulmonary embolism was the worst, and where the x-rays and MRIs have showed, CT scans have showed where there's scar tissue. It feels like it starts catching. And it's extremely painful. It puts a lot of pressure on my chest. It makes it feel like my uh, right lung is basically collapsing. So uh, really hard to deal with. Oh, look at these views. And uh, I'm gonna stop up here so I don't run into people. It's a crowded, crowded beach walk. And so, yeah, basically uh, debilitating pain. And it was almost exactly the same thing that happened at UTMB. Uh, you know, over 50K, 60K in, six hours, seven hours, it's like there's a timestamp on it, but it's, uh, it hurts so much. Like you're already dealing with some leg fatigue, maybe some dehydration, stomach issues, things like that. But then chafing even, my, my feet were actually holding up really well. Poca Torrent 3s, shout out to them, no falls. Uh, you know, that extra debilitating pain on top of it, it hurts with every step. It's, it's like it's rubbing the scar tissue here in my, Rib cage. I feel like I can't breathe also. My heart rate just went down, my pace went down. I was basically barely moving, walking very slowly with my poles up the hills later on in the race. I see uh, the top women pass me there. Uh, I just get some shots. I was coherent enough to get some shots there. But yeah, I was just uh, barely moving, but I was optimistic that I could still finish. I was gonna walk it in and it was gonna take a while. Uh, but then of course I got to the 80K aid station about mile 51. I knew there was still a lot of climbing left. I didn't realize there was less climbing though in the second half. I thought there was more climbing in the second half, but there was more climbing in the first half actually. So I already did most of the climbing, but there's still some steep uphills and downhills, exposed rock ridges, and the storm clouds were brewing. I noticed that too. There was like, oh, there's, looks like a big thunderstorm's coming in. So it was a little foreboding there. It started raining pretty hard, but uh, I was so out of it and in so much pain, a lot like UTMB with the chest pain and the lung pressure pain. I just, I could not deal with it. And so I, right, I mean, they can't end up canceling the race actually because of the weather. There was lightning and hail and all sorts of dangerous stuff going on. So only the top 50, 56 runners actually ended up finishing. Uh, they would have probably cut me off anyway if I had kept going to the, the high points near the end because I was moving that slow. But, uh, you know, I pulled the plug and it's a tough DNF because I never take those lightly. And, you know, truth be told, uh, there's still some problem solving I think I could do. There's maybe some future doctor visits that, you know, it's hard for me to get into a specialist doctor, uh, maybe before TDS and, you know, I'm paying out of pocket, so it's a lot of uh, financial cost. But, uh, you know, I don't know how much they could do. There's a lot of unknowns, especially with pulmonary embolism recovery, especially with people that are athletes. Uh, it's kind of not a well-researched area from what I've seen, but if any doctors have any tips, let me know but yeah the the breathing the scar tissue the catching i don't know if it has to do with inflammation or swelling after running for so long it's like the lining of your lungs basically is is rubbing is what it feels like and what it looks like and i just can't fully expand that especially my my right lung but i had clots in, in both of my lungs so there's scar tissue in both lungs uh which is never good for the breathing and i do a video on how my vo2 max is dropped off a cliff basically in these tests as well as my max heart rate but yeah it's really frustrating and, and really tough and uh you know it was so great to meet so many wonderful people and encouraging people and people that passed me and uh were able to finish the race but also people taking part in all the races for the weekend valderan it's a great running festival unique part of the world and uh you know even with the 100 mile race they actually canceled the whole thing so no one got to finish that race because of the weather but I was talking to some runners, they said there was extreme hail and you could hear the cracks of thunder and lightning, which is always scary. So uh, definitely going on with that. And yeah, like I said, truth be told, it's a long vlog, but uh, I've never actually done great in races much over 100K. I've 
I've won a lot of 100Ks and, and 50 mile, 80K races, but uh, you know, 100 miles and, and have been really tough for me. And I've only started 500 milers and you know, finished UTMB, got it out of finish at UTMB once, got it out of finish at Western States once, but the other ones, you know, one freak accident to falling and, and cutting my knee open. The other ones I've had meltdowns. And so maybe, you know, genetically my strengths might be in, in shorter ultra races, I would say. They always have been, even before the pulmonary embolism, but you know, this is uh, something that everyone has to deal with, the problem solving of a, a long ultra, going the duration, especially when you're doing it in the mountains with a lot of climbing. And, you know, this race wasn't 100 miles, but it, it was going to be, if I had finished, it would have been probably my third longest race uh, in terms of time because I was looking at, you know, 14, 16, 18 hour type of deal uh, with that much climbing in the mountains, 110K on technical trails. It's a lot, long time to be out there and problem solving at night, pulling out your headlamp again, the nutrition hydration aspects i could still dial those in a lot but then of course with this this chest this lung pain uh it scares me how debilitating it's been how how extra painful it's been because usually i could puke and rally usually i you know go through leg cramps and my legs actually weren't even that sore uh even from running what i did and i was feeling really good on some of those early technical downhills especially uh thinking that i was pacing myself well because the, the legs held up but uh, the lungs just couldn't handle it. And uh, yeah, I am still optimistic though. I want to problem solve more. I want to go to Chamonix. Uh, I will be in Chamonix for UTMB week. Uh, still signed up for the TDS, which is going to be my next big challenge. So hope to see you there. But thanks for all, all the supportive comments. Uh, again, meeting so many wonderful people. Of course, title sponsor Hoka. Keeping the dream alive and uh, Patreon supporters for keeping this YouTube channel alive. But I'll keep you updated with more videos as I travel back to the US uh, and then I will come back uh, to Chamonix for UTMB week. So thank you so much again. Thanks for liking these videos. Subscribing on here, it means the world to me. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.